Well, I enjoyed the magic of Recluse, but how does my second trip to this world compare? Hello and welcome to my channel. In this video, I will be talking about The Towers of the Sunset by L. E. Amadeus Jr., which is the second book in the Recluse saga. And it's interesting because not being a sequel, this actually takes place well before uh, The Magic of Recluse, the first book. Uh, and it's actually taking place before Recluse was even founded. Uh, and that's, that's kind of some of what we're dealing with in this book is how that actually happened. So I knew going into this, um, that this series is not specifically in order. There are books all throughout that uh, happen at different time periods, different settings and locations. And that's kind of part of it is it's really it's more so about the world building uh, from what I've, I've seen than uh, any particular thing. And there is I know I think like the fifth or sixth book or something is actually a sequel to the first one. And there are some from just from looking at uh, a list of them in order. It looks like there are some that like, oh, this actually some of these go in a row. Uh, as well. So there'll still be some, there's still some continuity, but um, I feel like it made sense at this point to go back because Magic of Recluse did a lot of really good things. It showed us Recluse and then it showed a character who was from there learning about the world uh, outside. And that's how we were kind of learning. And uh, then this one, finding out more about uh, Recluse and what happened, I think is interesting there as well. So I will say here uh, with the Towers of the Sunset, this took me a little bit to get into, to be honest, because uh, with this book, I felt like the plot felt a little too similar at first. And while I know that plot is not the main focus of uh, this series, it's more so the world building, it felt a little too similar at first because we're once again dealing with a young male character who uh, is somewhat ignorant of his own you know, power and, and what makes him special and his skills and attributes and he's, he's somewhat naive of the world and kind of going out to find things out as well. So it felt a little bit too similar to me at first, uh, but it did make it quite clear also why things were written the way that it is. And it did some different stuff and definitely I, I think did a good job with it uh, getting along further as well. So it's one of those things where it does make sense, certainly in retrospect, why it was done the way that it was. And the, the further you get into this book, I, I felt like it got a lot stronger for me. So in this book, we are following Cresslin, and uh, Cresslin actually comes from uh, the an area that we, we talked about a little bit, but didn't really get to see in the Magic of Recluse, where the, the warriors are women, and they're supposed to be some of like, the best warriors. Uh, but it, it's very much like a matriarchal society where he, uh, as uh, a son, even though he's the son of uh, one of the, the leaders of the area, is basically expendable, and his destiny is to just be a you know consort to some... Uh, powerful female uh, lord uh, somewhere else. And so he's supposed to be going off in, in this arranged marriage. And so already at that point, you know, you can see that we're, we're going for a bit of a spin on the traditional gender roles that you see in a lot of fantasy with it as well. And so instead of him being the young girl who's, you know, supposed to go off and marry some prince she doesn't know anything about, it's it's kind of the roles changed there. And uh, it's it's using the existing framework because we knew that this place of, of women warriors existed. That's something that we'd at least heard of uh, in, in the first book. And so um, it, it's something that I thought was kind of interesting that we were doing that route. Uh, the parts where it starts to feel really familiar is he's, he's extremely good at the sword, although he doesn't realize how good he is because he's been trained by these amazing warriors, and so he feels like he's not that good, but uh, compared to normal people who aren't these amazing warriors, he's actually really good. And we also start to see that he has uh, some powers as well, uh, and we get to see a little bit more uh, of the magic in this, which I also is something that I enjoyed. I should mention, because I actually forgot to mention, this does switch to third person. And it's my understanding that the rest of the series is third person and it's not first person like the first book was. Uh, so it's changed to third person, which I do prefer. Uh, it flows really similarly, honestly, but uh, I prefer third person. So that was uh, a nice change for me as well. Uh, and just uh, I'm, I'm, I'm glad for that uh, with it. But as I was saying anyway, you do get to, through his character, see a bit more of the magic than, you, than we did in The Magic of Recluse, mostly because... Uh, even though it's called the magic of recluse, uh, our, our character in that one, Laris, doesn't really fully understand the magic and how it works. And so we get, by the end of that book, we get a little bit more of an understanding of order and chaos and how the different magics work. And we're exploring that in a lot more detail here, 
Uh, and so that's one of the things that I did really enjoy about this book is the more exploration of order and chaos, how it works. And we do get some explanation of, of why uh, Cresslin is the way that he is here as well. And it also adds some more context to why some things may have happened in the Magic of Recluse as well. Uh, we do see as well too, which I'm going to talk a little bit of spoilers here in a bit because I want to talk more about the uh, relationships that we see with Cresslin as well. Uh, which I don't want to spoil what happens, but we, we get to see him uh, and a woman and their relationship and how she's very frustrated that he's just kind of good at everything. Uh, and I've actually saw, I saw some reviews when I was looking at this of people that were uh, mad that it's just, it's a male character who's good at everything and everything works out. And I'm like, yeah, that's, that's very much addressed, like point blank in the text though, both for the why and also straight up to... Uh, a female character who completely calls him out on it uh, and the way that he looks at things. So I just like, I feel like it's, I wonder if some of the people who had that issue didn't fully read the book because similar to the magic of recluse, it starts off kind of boring and you're like, Oh, I, I could see somebody being like, this is really boring. I'm going to DNF. Then you realize it's very intentional. These are books I've noticed. You have to be a little bit patient with because usually the things that seem like flaws are being done for a very specific reason. And that might make, you know, you still might not like the book and that's okay, but um, it's, you, you get more perspective as you, you go along with it. So I thought that was interesting as well. Things did change up, like I said, and get more explanation um, later on. Uh, so that was definitely cool. And like I said, just the the uses of the magic. And this does have something to do with uh, around the time of Recluse being founded as well. So kind of seeing the origins of that and uh, understanding also the impact that has and why some things in Magical Recluse are the way that they are, I think does a really good job here too. So uh, to, to kind of wrap up the, the spoiler-free part, is so overall, I think this is a really solid book. Um, I, uh, I feel like I liked Magic Recluse slightly more, maybe, um, but uh, there was a lot of really good stuff here, and I'm very curious to continue. I think uh, the next book also takes place at a different time. I'll have to start actually paying attention to the timeline here as well. And I'll be curious to keep exploring this world, because so far I'm still enjoying learning more about the world and uh, the, the order and the chaos magic, and getting to actually see a bit more of the magic here was really cool, as well as... Uh, the character relationships, I do think, were well done, even though it, it took a while to get there, for sure. Um, that's definitely something that... Uh, Ellie Madison Jr. also writes very flawed male characters, uh, and especially for the age range, like it makes sense why they are the way that they are. Uh, and he doesn't shy away from it, but it can make it seem like he's he's writing a character to support it. But I, I mean, it doesn't come across that way, at least to me. Uh, so it's interesting there. But to talk a few spoilers uh, here as well, so I'll have a timestamp if you want to skip past this, but... Uh, we, we see Crestlin, and I'm just going to jump right in, uh, as he's a, a storm wizard is what he's called. So he's a very powerful order wizard, and his power over storms. So we get to see a lot of crazy power with that as well. Him calling storms, destroying fleets of ships, uh, actually impacting the weather. So a detail I really like too with that is that because it's, it's based in order, if he calls these huge winds and rains, that's going to have, you know, a cause and effect relationship elsewhere. You know, he's taking reins that should be going somewhere. And so all of it with order and the way that it's done. And also uh, right toward the end too, where we see the clash of when he's using order magic to take life, which is something of chaos and, and the effects that it has with it. The big thing being though, why is he so powerful randomly? Why was Lara so powerful randomly? What well, we find more about, and it's kind of talked about a little bit, but I feel like it's more so confirmed here, uh, is that because, you know, naturally you need a balance of order and chaos. You can't really have just one, which is something that we explored a lot in uh, Magic of Recluse because Recluse is pure order. And so chaos was starting to get kind of stronger, but this gives more context to it. And that because in this time before Recluse was established, chaos was was getting a little more out of hand. Chaos was, was reigning, literally. The chaos wizards were the big power and the order wizards didn't really have any support sort of like structure or setup and so Kreslin uh, becomes a very powerful order wizard because there needs to be more balance between order and chaos and then uh, is is working to found recluse with uh, Majera which that's where uh, their relationship once again I wasn't sure I felt about it at first but I, I liked that we eventually get to the point where he's just straight called out on like you don't think about her at all you're always thinking about yourself or thinking about you're attracted to her and like those kinds of things you're not thinking about her and also how it makes her feel that you just have all of these skills and are really good at everything uh and like you're 
feelings, even though you were supposed to be kind of redundant and, and like you don't see yourself as being all that special when you're like, I'm not special and then I'm also good at everything and how that affects somebody, especially somebody that you're supposed to be in a relationship with. So I liked the exploration of that and kind of that has thrown in his face. And he's like, ah, I've been kind of a dick, haven't I? And so it's once again where it comes back around to that as well. But then with the founding uh, of Recluse as well, and just the way that that then uh, gives you some more context to the magic of Recluse, where Recluse is this all, it's pure order, they're very powerful, but because once again, there's so much order, well then naturally, some more chaos is gonna start to grow. And so we're gonna start seeing more chaos growing uh, outside of Recluse, and then uh, Laris ends up kind of stopping some of that to an extent. But we can also see why it's happened because outside of Recluse, there's a lot less order because there's so much order there. And once again, it's all of a balance. So I think this did a really good job building out the world and the magic, uh, also some great characters. And uh, I'm interested to see where this series goes overall. It's uh, There's a ton of books, and I know like so a lot of them are just different characters, different time periods. And that's not something you see very much where it's more episodic and not... Um, it's like individual episodes though versus like actually following a main thing and so jumping around in time so that's not really episodic but it was you know, like more of like an anthology I think is what I was looking to say um, I don't know but um, yeah so it's just the way that we're, we're doing that we're looking at different times different characters uh, and just learning more about it I, I, it's something I've enjoyed so so not anything like uh, you know I, I think both the first two books were solid I, would, I didn't look a lot of either one but I really enjoyed them and had a good time and definitely will be continuing to, to find out more uh, so those are my thoughts, though, overall on The Towers of the Sunset by Elliot Monisett Jr., second book in Recluse. Let me know if you've read this, if you agree, disagree with anything, uh, or just, like, if you have any other thoughts on this series and specific ones I should be really looking forward to or, or how you feel about it as a whole. Always interested to hear your thoughts. Make sure to give the video a like if you enjoyed it. Check the link in the description, as always, for the Wizard of the Enclave Discord if you want to chat books, whether this book, other books, really anything at all. It's a lot of fun. We'd love to have you. And, of course, if you enjoy my content, make sure to subscribe. Mm -hmm.